indeed. Right. Okay, so thank you. Uh, uh, so, yes, I am uh, Dr. Brian Scott, so I'm a professor here of economics, and you might be thinking to yourself, all right, economics, I can check out because it's pretty boring. And, and you might be right, it might be very boring. But I just wanted to quickly note uh, uh, that, A, I don't know how to use this thing. There we go. That economics uh, it isn't actually all about money. It's about uh, it's the science or study of decision making, and uh, so we look at how people make decisions, what goes into uh, people's decision making process, and what kinds of things they should look at, and uh, and and how people can come up with uh, better decisions that they're happier with. Um, the other thing to note about me is that I'm also a, a really bad amateur athlete. Uh, you can't really see that, but uh, so I do marathons, triathlons, and things of that nature. I'm trying to finish a triathlon, and I'm thinking, my God, I still have to run. Uh, so, uh, so I've trained for a number of years, right? And I've made a number of uh, good decisions and uh, also some bad decisions. Okay, and so, uh, so what I'd like to do today is just offer some uh, decision-making tools that you can use uh, in your profession and when you're, when you're thinking about uh, working with your students or the administration or, or really any facet uh, of, of what you do. Um, and, uh, and so uh, when economists think about decision making, we, th we know that uh, sometimes people make bad decisions, uh, in part uh, due to uh, emotions. Okay, so you want to keep emotions uh, out of the decision making process. Uh, and, and there's great uh, pressure for you folks to perform, right? Uh, to, or, or rather, for your students to perform. Uh, uh, you, you may be asking yourself, well, gosh, should we squeeze in one more practice before the big regatta? Uh, do we go to a regatta? Do we go to a fourth regatta? Uh, uh, and you may, you may or may not uh, know whether to go if the weather's bad, right? Uh, and you may be pressured uh, to do that. Um, so the first thing uh, I would suggest you do is decide on who the decision is, ma is being made for. Is it for you? Is it for your career? Uh, if you don't go to the regatta, uh, are you going to get fired? Uh, uh, it could be that you're making this decision for your students. If, if we go to this, will it increase our rankings and uh, potentially uh, get some of our students uh, some scholarships uh, next year when they go off to college? Or it could be that you're trying to uh, uh, squeeze in a, a practice really quickly because you need to make it home for the painter. right? Uh, it, uh, so you need to decide who the, the decision is being made uh, for. Uh, the next thing you uh, should probably do, or an economist would suggest, is uh, go out and gather information. I mean, uh, so here I am, the academic, telling you to go gather information. But if you know that it's going to sleet 10% of the days uh, in February, and you don't go out on the water when it's sleeting, then you know that 10% of your practices, or you can predict that 10% of your practices are probably going to be canceled. And so you need to prepare for that. Um, also, um, if you're on a tidal body of water, make sure you know you, you, you look at the tides and, and, and go against them uh, at the beginning of practice and with them uh, at the end. And the other thing you can do uh, with gathering information is ask uh, others, especially if you're having a hard time making a decision. Uh, you can ask uh, other coaches. You can ask the administration. You can even ask your students, hey, uh, I have a decision that I'm having a hard time with. Uh, why don't you uh, give me some input, right? And sometimes your students can come up with uh, really good solutions uh, that you hadn't uh, thought of before. Uh, the next thing to do is take the long view. Uh, when you're trying to, or, or when you're thinking about decisions, try and make decisions before they happen. You know, prepare for these, especially if, if you think that there's going to be some biz, uh, big decisions. You want to uh, also make a schedule, and, and clearly you, you folks have uh, already scheduled out practices and things of that nature, but also, uh, again, going back to the, the gathering information, make sure that you plan for uh, at least some of your practices to be canceled because maybe students are sick. And so try and uh, come up uh, with, with plans uh, uh, for those types of situations. Uh, another thing is, is uh, like I said, make a plan. If you have four students that are sick, okay, that's a rule. We're not going to go out on the water today or we're not going to make it to the regatta. Okay, so you come up with these answers to potential problems early on. Um, you can also make these plans or these action plans after a, a, a relatively hard decision. Uh, so if, if you have gone through a, a, a large struggle uh, trying to come up with a decision, you may want to make a rubric or uh, a rule uh, related to this type of, of decision that you can just write down. Um, the other thing you can do is rely on outside um, decision makers to make decisions for you. Say if there's a 50% uh, chance of snow tomorrow, we already call the practice. We're not going to go out and we're not going to row tomorrow. Okay, and so you can have other people or other uh, institutions try and make some of these some of these decisions for you. 
Uh, the other thing you need to do is, is after you make these rules, after you plan for this, you need to stick to it. And we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, one other uh, thing that actually I just thought of this morning is sunk costs. When you're trying to make a deci decision, don't uh, worry about uh, what's happened in the past. Only think about what could affect you in the future. All right, so if you're particularly unhappy with a group of people or uh, a person, ignore that. Uh, uh, if, if, uh, if that has happened in the past, you can use that information to predict what they're going to do in the future. Um, but uh, 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 don't hold grudges uh, is one thing uh, an economist would suggest. All right, the next thing, use the uh, with or without principle. As we all know, Katy Perry is uh, now without, uh, as we've heard. So what you want to do is uh, look at what would life be like uh, if we swapped out one uh, team captain for another. Would it make a difference? Would it increase the probability of us winning a regatta? And, and if so, by how much? And is that worth it? So uh, we just want to look at the with, with that person as the team captain or without that person uh, as the team captain. Um, uh, and what, uh, what would happen if we didn't make it to the third regatta? Or what would happen if we did make it? Would it help us with the fourth regatta? Uh, uh, or, or, or would that affect um, uh, my, uh, our standings, right? And so you just want to look at things with or without. Don't, don't discount uh, uh, what would happen without doing that. Uh, and that will help you, uh, help you make uh, your decisions. Uh, another good thing uh, that uh, an economist would suggest is to form a coalition uh, among your peers. It's a whole lot easier to make a decision with five or six other coaches. Uh, you may want to look around and, and, and uh, uh, exchange information with people uh, you're sitting next to. Uh, and so if you can come together and put your minds together, two, two heads are better than one, uh, that may help you uh, make, make a better decision. The other thing then is if you form a coalition, uh, you have a lot more power. You say, hey, we're not going to go to this regatta next year. Five of us won't go to the regatta next year if uh, it doesn't start uh, an hour later or something like that, right? So this is something that can give you a lot of power and also help you make, help you make some really good decisions. Uh, okay. Reputation. I, yeah, I just put George Washington up here. But reputation uh, can also help you. Uh, in that when you have a particular reputation and you've had it for a long time, people expect you to act a particular way and you expect others to act a particular way because you have that reputation. And that can really help you. If, you, if your students know that you're going out of the water no matter what, they're never going to complain about it because you, they know that your reputation is you're always going to go out and practice. All right, and if you go to every single regatta, everyone believes that you'll go to that regatta and everyone will expect you to do that. Now, this could harm you or help you depending on your reputation and depending on the situation, but uh, in general, economists, uh, what, what we study is that if you have a, a, a strong reputation uh, that you don't deviate from, and it's fair or you're a nice guy or a nice gal, that that in the long run uh, helps you and you end up winning more often, maybe not necessarily God is, but just in general in, in life. Um, all right, so, Let's say you come up against a particularly hard decision. What an economist would do, and I'll offer this, and it looks a little squirrely right now, but is make a decision tree. Let's say that uh, the soccer team wants a, uh, a team van or, or you know, the school van the same weekend you do. Uh, so you have to go up against uh, the soccer team. And, and, and the, the, the decision may be A, the soccer team requests the van, and B, the soccer team doesn't. Well, you, you think to yourself, well, if they request the van, we could do a, a number of different things. Maybe outcome one is we go to the principal and say, hey, we need that van. Uh, uh, outcome two, uh, we find our own transportation. Or outcome three, we skip the regatta, OK? And when you uh, outline each of these decisions, you can then go ahead and choose the best decision, the best outcome for you and maybe the other soccer team or, or the other team you're competing with. And what this does is it uh, helps you get a, a, a clear understanding of what the incentives are for you and the other team and helps you form a good game plan uh, to help you get what you want. And we'll get into uh, maybe uh, uh, forcing, the, say, the other team, the, the uh, soccer team, into choosing not wanting to uh, take the van that particular weekend here. Uh, in the next slide. All right. Which is then, of course, commitment. All right. 
So how do you win at chicken? And what is chicken? This is not where you get on your buddy's shoulders and fight in the pool. This is where you get in a car and drive towards each other. And the first person to turn is the chicken. How do you win at chicken? OK, it's, it's fairly simple. You get a wrench and some bright orange spray paint. And you get in your car. You take the wrench, and you uh, loosen up the steering wheel. You spray paint it bright orange, and then you start the race. As you're racing down the road, you roll down your window. You take your steering wheel off, and you throw it out the window. What does that tell your opponent? You can't turn. And you're, th so they either run into you or, or, uh, 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 or, or they're the chicken, right? OK, so you can do this. And this is what I was talking about, that decision tree. You can go ahead and uh, send in your registration fee for the regatta as soon as you can, because you know that the soccer team is going to request that van. Well, then that puts the administration in, well, OK, maybe you won't give us the van, but oh, we can't make it there. Uh, without the van, and we've already paid for it. So if you just want to throw that money away, I mean, that's fine, right? So you can do things like that, right? Force people into it. You can make hotel reservations, entrance fees. Uh, uh, also with your students, you can put rules in the student handbook uh, uh, that relate to your team or just teams in general. And that way, uh, people know what their expectations are, as, we, uh, as was discussed in the last uh, presentation. And then you need to have the reputation to stick to those rules. You can put rules on the locker room door. And you can put uh, the expectations and the results of unmet expectations uh, on the locker room. And, uh, and provided uh, uh, you have the reputation to follow through with this, uh, you're forcing these people or administration or, or students into a, a particular situation that you want them to be in. Uh, the other thing uh, I would suggest is uh, ask for forgiveness and not permission. Go ahead and do things. And they say, oh, well, you know, I've, I've already set things up. So uh, we, it kind of forces people into certain situations. Um, all that being said, I, I hate to say this, but I think we're, uh, I, I'm done here. Uh, and, I'm and I'm ahead of time, right? Uh, I, I figured you guys, I figured I would try to, to not uh, uh, let you guys fall asleep too quickly uh, before the next speaker. Uh, do we have uh, uh, any questions? Sure. Head of the school committee this year. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm sitting in my office and we're starting to see these weather reports. On Wednesday, we got a sniff of what was coming up at the head of the school committee. I'm standing close to you. So well, because, phone. okay, yeah, we, we had big conversations about this. So on Wednesday night, then Thursday morning, we're starting to really see that this is coming. They're calling for wind, they're calling for rain, they're calling for all sorts of horrible stuff. So I do what most coaches would do in this situation. I go to my wife and start whining. <laughs> and I was like, oh, help me with this decision. And she's like, what are you, nuts? Of course you're not going to, right? We had those long, detailed decisions, and now I've got the headache. So then I call my, one of my great buddies, Mike Hughes, over at Navy Academy. And we're having these, he says, I'm seeing the same thing. And we're going back and forth. I got the, all the guys on my staff. And they know, when I get like this, they just, OK, we're out of here. The guy's a freak show. We're out of here. So Hughes and I start having these conversations. Now it's Friday morning. Well, what do we do? We got a bus coming, all these things. I'm going to call the doctor of decisions. <laughs> so he said, here's a hierarchy. Gather information. Yeah, I've been doing that. I got all these weather. Collaborate. I've been talking to the, all these coaches. And then he said, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I said, you're <laughs> supposed to tell me. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. And then he leaves. So. <laughs> so just so you know, Mike Hughes and I actually made agreement. I said, if you don't go, I won't go. And he said, if you don't go, I don't. So we both called up at the exact same time and said, we're not coming. So we were the first two to bail out. When we started to feel real good, when we heard about one of the Philly schools decided not to go to the head of the school. And we thought, OK, but I have to tell you, that was an incredibly hard decision for us because of the expense, because of the athletes had done all this training. And I, I can really appreciate, and Brian was very helpful in saying, well, here are some of these parameters. So while we have some time here, just, do you have any, I, I, there's a lot of hard decisions in coaching. Do you, you want to throw anything by Brian here that, that
just one more second, what was really interesting, we had practice down at the boathouse. So we're doing this big ur contest, and the kids are on Twitter stream. And it's, hey, coach, it's really flat. Look at this picture. Oh, no. So that went on for about an hour and a half, and John and I were out, out back going, oh, we're hitting our heads on the wall. Like, oh, geez, we made the wrong choice. And all of a sudden, one of the kids goes, hey, they just brought a bus in for people with hyperthermia. <laughs> John and I went out. We went, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that just kind of shows that, you know, especially if you're vested in this, you've trained for this, and the students have trained for this, uh, you, you don't want to cancel this, right? You don't want to, but uh, that's why it's maybe good to make up some of these decisions, some of these rules early on, so you can, so you can make this without emotion. And, and the other thing then is, after all, uh, all the uh, um, data gathering you did and the decision you, you made, you can then go to other people and say, okay, these are all the steps that I took to make this decision, and it was the best decision I could think of making at the time, right? And so if an administrator or someone else asks you, well, why did you do that? Or a parent, well, these are the reasons. You know, it wasn't just, you know, uh, off the cuff or uh, from the hip. It was, we really took a, a thoughtful look at, at this decision and, and made it in this way. And so, so that's why, uh, you know, I was, I was offering those, uh, those tools. Yeah. All the data, right? Yeah. Uh, again, and this is why uh, I say, well, it, you know, if you kind of follow these steps, you say, I made the best decision that I could. And that may be also something that, that was maybe somebody you didn't talk to. Maybe you did, I don't know, but uh, the students, did you, did you talk to them at all and ask them? I'm not putting you on the spot here, by the way. But uh, that may be some, something, <laughs> something else that you could have uh, also done is talk to your students and say, okay, well, uh, let me, let me uh, tell you about my decision and, and why I did it. And what do you think about that? Do you have any other uh, feedback uh, maybe before you make your final, your final decision? And, and certainly if parents are going to get involved, you don't want to call the parents. But uh, uh, this is one of the ways that you can just uh, say, okay, I, I've gone through a process to make this decision. I only had five minutes to do it, so, you know, uh, uh, don't throw me to the, the wolves yet. Uh, and, and so this kind of this kind of backs you up as well. Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. But we thought it'd be okay. Right, 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 right. So, so yeah. So maybe, maybe that would you know give credence to writing up some of this stuff you know beforehand and, and sharing it with people. Right. Right. So, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Right. Thank you. No, thank you for saving me.